Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today, the 18th of November, Holy Mother, the Church calls us to the memory of Saint Rose Philippine Datsin. Saint Rose Philippine Datsin was born on 29th August 1769 at Grenoble, France into an aristocratic family noted for its work in law and charity. Pierre French cures her fan choice. Her daddy was into law and her mother was into charity and she got both their qualities into her. As a child, she had this desire to go and serve in the mission land which was brought into her by the Jesuits who used to frequent her house. She had a desire to go and serve the Indians in the new world that is the Americas, especially Louisiana was her dream. That's why uh, she joined the Sisters of St. Mary of Visitation so that she can go and do the care of people, uh, of the Indians uh, in the New World. With the onset of French Revolution in the year 1791, religious freedom was curtailed and the churches were closed and the religious institutions too. Back home, Philippine, as she generally was called at home, was in herself doing that which we, she was aiming to do, that is taking care of the street urchins and the poor people and helping the priests who were now underground. After the Pact of Rome between Rome and France, when the churches again opened, she joined the convent. And because the sisters uh, the, of the congregation which she joined were not willing to now come and do the service again. She, they were so much into the comforts of this world that she now joined few other sisters of the Society of the Sacred Heart and she became the Mother Superior very soon. And these sisters, five of them, landed in the territory of Mississippi. They were one of the first missionaries to land in the region of Mississippi, which was a remotest village in the U.S., according to her too. And there she built so many houses, convents, schools, and did so much that six convents, 64 nuns, and 350 children in their schools by the end of of 1830. All this despite the tremendous hardships, problem with fuel, money, loading, food, drinking water, forest fires, all this. Yet they went on cheerfully enduring it all. It was finally in the year 1841 when she was all 72 years old that a parish priest called Pierre Jean called her to work with the with the tribal people, and which was her dream, right? And she went to serve uh, the tribal people there. And there she gave her last breath. Her presence with the tribals, with the natives, was so beautiful that they used to see her always praying. And in the tribal language, they used to call her Kwahaka Kanum Ad which means a woman who always prayed. Because it is, uh, there is a legend that she always was found kneeling in the chapel, in the church. So sometimes the kids used to come and throw piece of papers, bits of papers on her. And then when they come back hours later, they would find those bits of papers on her unmoved, undisturbed. That meant how much she was stable, she was consistent, she was uh, attached to her prayer. And later in 1842, she was recalled to Charles, Missouri, where she spent the rest of her life as a model of inspiration to people there. At the age of 83, she died and a church in Missouri is still dedicated to her. Beatified in 1940, she was canonized by Pope John Paul II in the year 1988. Saint Rose Philippine stands to us as a model missionary, someone who left her homeland, went to a foreign land and there she gave her all. She was a woman, she was weak, 
but this did not stop her. Till the ripe old age of 83, she served. Let us use our youth, use our time, use our thought, use our dream for the other, for the good of the other. Amen.